I am Dr. Nick Sells. I am an orthopedist at MedStar Georgetown University Hospital. I specialize in the foot and ankle. We see patients of all kinds for foot and ankle injuries uh, and different deformities. And the problems of the foot and ankle are vast. They can be trauma that recently occurred. They can be old trauma. They can be deformities that you're born with. Uh, they can be uh, pain that comes up uh, into the foot and ankle uh, that we don't know why it came up. Um, and all these patients are different ages, uh, different sizes, and from different backgrounds. Despite growing up in an orthopedic family, I went into medical school with an open mind, uh, exploring all the different facets that the medicine has to offer. Um, but I did land on orthopedics in the end, uh, mostly because I fell in love with the different problems that patients have. Uh, the immediacy of being able to treat many of those problems with surgery and actually fixing a problem as opposed to treating a chronic illness. Uh, so orthopedics really uh, fascinated me in the different ways that we treat the very complicated problems that patients have. There are orthopedic advancements occurring all the time, uh, many of which are things that we do in the OR, but many of which are the things that we do outside of the OR. There are advancements in therapy, there are advancements in medication that are preventing surgeries, and then within the surgical field there are always new and exciting devices that we are using that are allowing patients to bear weight sooner, get back to their activities faster, and speeding up recovery in a way that has really uh, revolutionized the way we treat patients with injuries. When I look at a patient, I don't just look at their foot or the ankle, but I like to treat them as a patient as a whole. And so certainly we explore the problems and the solutions of the foot and ankle, but also we make sure that the solutions and treatments that we offer fit into the person and what they need in particular. And sometimes that's surgery, but often it's not, and trying to get the patient back to whatever it is that they want to do. The most satisfaction I get is the individual patient and taking a patient that is having a bad problem, a patient that has had a bad problem for a long time, and finally being able to help them get through it to a point where they can return to do the things they love. And sometimes these follow-ups that they have aren't just weeks, but they're months, and for a patient to finally be able to return to an activity that they hadn't been able to do in years is really quite satisfying. So the foot and ankle is a very complex anatomy. Um, probably the most important part of it is the ankle, which is consistent of three bones, the fibula, the talus, and the tibia. And the talus articulates between uh, the medial side of the tibia and the fibula and works in a fulcrum-like fashion to allow the ankle to move up and down. And it's really one of the most important uh, joints in the body for weight bearing. Uh, the foot underneath becomes a little bit more complicated with several different joints. We can basically break it down into the hind foot, the midfoot, and the forefoot. Uh, the midfoot has uh, several bones and joints that construct the arch of the foot and is generally a much more rigid structure uh, to allow a person to generate force, particularly when running, sprinting, etc., any of these kinds of explosive activities. And lastly, we come to the forefoot, which is mainly the toes and the, the bones, uh, the metatarsals just behind the toes, that have to have a lot of flexibility in order to accommodate uneven ground and very uh, flexible situations to be able to spring off the, off the forefoot to uh, accelerate or quickly slow down and do all the athletic activities that we like our entire bodies to perform for. Foot and ankle surgery can be quite complex, uh, specifically because there are so many joints in each of these areas within the foot and ankle. Um, the joints have very complex motions, particularly in the hind foot. Uh, the subtalar joint is a joint that's off axis with the rest of the body at two separate 45 degree angles, and its, uh, its complex movement can make uh, fixing problems in it quite challenging. Um, other parts of the foot and ankle that require specific attention to and complicated surgery include the, the ankle joint itself, which is a big enough joint that we can uh, put a camera in and do arthroscopy in to address many of those problems, uh, which allows us to minimally invasively uh, correct several different uh, pathologies that often afflict the ankle.
The best way to know if you need surgery for your foot and ankle problem is that you have pain despite failing multiple conservative non-operative modalities of treatment. There are many non-operative modalities of treatment that can solve a lot of foot and ankle problems. And these include immobilization in a boot or a brace, they include injections, physical therapy, as well as custom orthotics. If we've tried all of the conservative and non-operative techniques and still the pain persists, often surgery can be the right answer. Uh, we use surgery as a last resort, but often an important tool to be able to get you back to the activities that you love doing. And whether that be tennis or basketball or any sort of walking or golf that you love to do, we want to get you back on the court or back on the field or back to whatever your previous level of uh, function was. Anything we can do that minimizes the trauma that occurs during surgery that has at least as good results as an open surgery we think is worthwhile pursuing and performing. And so for the ankle that can be several things, but uh, one of the things we do uh, with relative frequency is ankle arthroscopy, which is taking a camera, looking into the ankle, and then through a separate portal performing the different types of procedures that needed to be done. Uh, many of this time it's repairing cartilage, or bone grafting, uh, or cleaning up uh, different types of uh, synovitic processes that uh, occur intraarticularly. So the most common foot and ankle conditions fall into three categories. Uh, there's deformity, uh, something you're either born with or has been progressing for some time. There are sports-related injuries. And then finally, trauma, which tends to be broken bones. Uh, and these often require the specialty of an orthopedic foot and ankle surgeon uh, to be able to thoroughly evaluate and decide whether or not an intervention is necessary, which could be anything from simple physical therapy, uh, boot brace immobilization, or something as complex as a surgical intervention. For most foot and ankle procedures, there is a short period of non-weight bearing after surgery. And this usually lasts about six weeks. Uh, after that, we usually have you start walking, but usually that walking is done in a boot or a brace for the next four to six weeks. So to really be back into a regular shoe after the vast majority of foot and ankle cases, it's about three months. That being said, there are many smaller foot and ankle procedures where patients are walking right away, perhaps in a hard-soled shoe, uh, or even a boot right off the bat. But many of the foot and ankle procedures that we do do require a period of non-weight bearing uh, for the tissue and bones to heal in the places that we've put them before we get you back to your activities. The vast majority of foot and ankle procedures are outpatient procedures that are performed at the hospital or the surgery center. And most people go home the same day without any sort of overnight stay in the hospital. For the vast majority of foot and ankle surgeries, most people are walking at the latest at six weeks from the procedure. There are many procedures where we have patients walking sooner afterwards, particularly forefoot cases like hallux rigidus, which is arthritis of the big toe, or bunion surgery where patients are essentially walking on their heel on their foot right away. But for many of the cases that involve the midfoot and the hind foot or the ankle joint itself, people are off their foot for a period of four to six weeks before we get them walking in a boot. Many types of surgery on the foot and ankle require the patient to be non-weight bearing after surgery, sometimes for as short a period as two weeks, but sometimes even up to six weeks, even sometimes 12 weeks, and this can be very difficult for patients. We're very used to being able to walk on both of our limbs, but there are many devices that assist you that we can use to help ameliorate that. Uh, the simple of which are crutches and a walker, uh, but probably the best way is to use a knee scooter in which you put your knee of the injured or post-operative extremity onto the scooter. It's got four wheels and handbrakes sort of like a bicycle. Often some of them have a little basket and bell as well, but they allow you to zip around pretty quickly and effectively after complex foot and ankle surgery that requires you to be non-weight bearing for a certain period of time. And many patients get back to work very quickly with one of these devices uh, and can restore their activity of daily living.
Footwear can be very important in addressing different foot and ankle pathologies. And there are many shoes that are designed for fashion and many shoes that are designed for comfort. Um, many people have a foot uh, that doesn't have restrictions on what kind of shoe wear it can wear. But some feet do have difficulties getting into certain kinds of shoes. Uh, many people have different foot deformities that also require the use of an orthotic that adjusts the way that they walk on their foot in order to make their walk smoother and decrease pain that they're getting in the foot. Uh, the most common of these deformities are an overly high arched foot or a cavo varus foot, uh, uh, with the opposite being a flat foot or a pes plano valgus foot. And both of these uh, conditions can be uh, treated often with conservative therapy like orthotics and physical therapy, but sometimes do need surgical correction to actually uh, take the deformity uh, and remove the deformity and create a straight plantigrade foot. Prompt foot and ankle care is very important, um, mostly to have an expert look at the foot injury and be able to describe to you whether or not the injury or the deformity is one that progresses. Uh, many are progressive and will go on to be a worse problem if they aren't handled promptly, but many are not. And so uh, you should consult your uh, foot and ankle specialist to know if yours is one that needs to be taken care of or that can be watched over time. A bunion is a common foot and ankle problem uh, where many of the patients think that there's a growth on the inside of the foot, but it's actually uh, an often progressive deformity of the first joint of the big toe, the MTP joint, uh, where the first bone starts to swing inward and the second bone starts to swing outward, and that angle that can become sharper and sharper uh, creates a bulge that sticks out on the inside of the foot. Many of these are progressive and many of them often become painful and when they get like that they can cause secondary problems of the lesser toes, the second and the third toe, particularly causing hammer toes or painful calluses on the bottom of the foot. Uh, when these bunions develop to this severity, uh, particularly the ones that are painful, they often require surgery for correction, which isn't just as simple as removing uh, the prominence because that's not the actual problem. We actually have to realign the bones so that the toe goes straight and no longer has that acute angle sticking out on the inside of the foot. Bunion surgery is so common because, number one, bunions are so prevalent. The second problem is they tend to be painful, particularly given certain types of shoe wear. Um, there are many populations in this world that don't wear shoes still today, and many of them have bunions, and most of them, to be honest, don't cause them a whole lot of problems. Uh, but when you put a bunion, which has widened the forefoot, into a shoe that can't accommodate it, these often become very painful and progressive, and they can lead to secondary problems down the road, uh, which we try to prevent. The two most common complications of bunion surgery are stiffness in the big toe after surgery, and the second one is actually recurrence of the bunion. Both of these complications we are very careful to avoid when performing bunion surgery uh, by using uh, techniques that uh, decrease the post-operative stiffness as well as rehabilitation techniques to keep the joint moving. Secondarily, we also use many techniques in order to prevent the recurrence of the bunion by fixing it in the right way. There are actually over a hundred described different types of bunion operations, and we perform uh, specific ones for specific bunions in order to make sure that that bunion is not one that is going to come back in the future. Physical therapy can be an important tool following many surgeries, and bunion surgery as well. Uh, in particular, we try to avoid stiffness after bunion surgery, and so when a patient is beginning to get stiff or the patient doesn't seem to be getting their motion back quite the way we would have wanted, physical therapy can be very helpful to get the big toe moving again like it was before. Not every bunion surgery and not every surgery in the foot and ankle in general requires physical therapy. Many do, particularly the ones surrounding sporting injuries and athletes, uh, but any time that there is an indication for physical therapy where we uh, are concerned about motion and regaining motion, physical therapy is a very valuable uh, tool that we use. Uh, 
A common problem people have is ankle sprains and repetitive ankle sprains. Now many ankle sprains can be treated uh, conservatively and they do quite well, but some of them have lingering problems and particularly patients who tend to sprain their ankle over and over again think that it's just the way they're built. But actually there are very good techniques for tightening up the ligaments of the ankle so that you no longer continue to sprain the ankle over and over again. Uh, the procedure is called a brostrum and we tighten up the anterior lateral ligaments of the ankle in order to rebuild it in a way that's much more stable and people can walk on uneven ground without having to fear rolling their ankle over and over again. A lot of people have a problem in the back of their heel uh, where their Achilles tendon plugs in on the calcaneus in the back. Uh, they can develop a large spur here that can become quite painful, particularly in the back of shoes. And many people think that this is a problem that they have to deal with, but actually that spur can be removed and the Achilles tendon reinserted into the bone in a way that provides people with relief both in the shoes they wear and throughout the activities that they do through the day and taking away that chronic pain that they can't get rid of in the back. Many patients have the problem of ankle arthritis where the cartilage breaks down in the ankle joint. This is very unique compared to some of the other joints in the body like the knee or the hip because ankle arthritis is often related to past injuries, particularly an old ankle fracture. Many people have been told for their ankle arthritis that the only option is to fuse the ankle where they lose the mobility but get the benefit of decreased pain. Uh, newer techniques and newer technologies have now developed ankle replacements, which we do at MedStar Georgetown, uh, that can preserve the motion of the ankle while also taking away the pain of severe ankle arthritis. Many patients have a problem of a flat foot or a feet that turn outward. Over time, this can become actually a painful deformity where people get pain on the inside of their foot and ankle. And many people think that they have to just live with this pain. Uh, formerly, uh, surgeries were done that actually fused the hind foot in order to correct the flat foot and restore the arch. But this is a surgery that sacrificed motion in order to decrease pain. Uh, we now do surgeries that uh, actually move the bones into different positions uh, to restore the arch but keep the joints mobile and so that people can keep their motion but have a corrected foot that no longer has pain on the inside and so this flat foot correction is becoming more and more popular among patients who want to keep their motion but want to have a straight and painless foot. The foot and ankle care at MedStar Georgetown Hospital is unique uh, because we follow the motto of cure personnels, which is care for the whole person. And so while we are focused on getting the foot better and back to its normal anatomy and normal function, we're also focused on the patient and getting them back to their regular activities in whatever it is they love to do.